Peter John Ross and the panel give advice to beginning filmmakers. Okay, so this round table is really to discuss things, advice for first time filmmakers. I think the biggest mistake I made right off the bat is uh, I cast friends and family instead of <laughs> actors. And uh, yeah, it's like a classic failure moment, you know? I thought, well, it's a pretty good story and maybe they won't make people's eyes roll out of their head. <laughs> unless they're actors. <laughs> That's right, yeah, unless they're, <laughs> yeah, unless they're actors. I know some actors hard to work with their friends and family though. Right? I think, experience. I think it's also don't try to, I like to keep things very organic and uh, you know, know, know your limitations. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I just feel like a lot of times people try to bite off more than they can chew and then, then you just get yourself in trouble. Well, what were the things you regret that oh, you man. learned from? Sound. I never, I never realized how important sound was. And not only that, but even having a, a, an experienced DP, you know, you look on the screen and you see all these bad lighting and bad shots and everything. Um, I think I think having a professional sound person is probably the key. If I could ever save money again, it would be on a DP and a sound person. Yeah, I mean I agree totally. Because if if you don't if your sounds not there, you you really have nothing. And um, I, I think people just don't realize how much it actually takes. You know that goes into it. There's from from the script to the actors, lighting, camera, everything. There's just so much stuff that people they might see a movie and they. They might think, oh, I can do this, but then when you're actually doing it, you can definitely get overwhelmed. Tell me about it. I didn't think I could make a movie. Let me just be clear. <laughs> I, I thought I could, I, I thought, I bet I can write a good story. I mean, I'd written my whole life. Um, and then I thought, well, I'll just be an adventure to see if I can figure out how to get it sensibly onto screen. And, uh, you know, this like major failures along the way the first time. I think it's an interesting point, though. Uh, you learn, I, I, at least I did, that. Um, you have to strike this balance between being collaborative and did you build a functioning vision at the beginning and get everybody lined up to it and that kind of becomes your uh, how you make decisions you know going forward so you have to be collaborative you have to hear all the points of view but it's actually really liberating to be able to say well we all agree to this vision and you know that that's save I, I, I found it saves a lot of hurt feelings to say look we set out we knew what we were gonna make and I appreciate that I love your idea but but. It doesn't fit, right? right. So I, it's just an interesting, you, you bringing up being, it being collaborative. It is, and yet mostly I think one person owns the vision. Yeah, I think, I think one of the biggest things, um, because after I, I shot my uh, first movie, is organization is the key. Mm. And, and working with some people, I'm finding that they're not as organized as, as I am being former military and stuff. So that drives me crazy. So any first time filmmaker got to be organized. And, and it's really to me about the five days you're not shooting, where you're getting organized as opposed to just those two days, the weekend when yeah. you're shooting. You're right. Because if you're not organized those five days, it shows those two days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went to film school. So when I was in film school, we were shooting, you know, 60 millimeter and Super 8. And then, you know, when I moved back, it was the digital revolution, shooting with XL. And I hated the fact that it just had the video look. Mm. So I was, was, you know, I hated video. I, 24 frames came along. That was that made mm -hmm. things nicer. And now the fact that you can switch lenses, get the depth of field that you want, I feel like that's been huge in terms of like progressing my, my what what I, what I do. You have the want storytelling to tools. Exactly. You you have the tools to achieve what your vision might have might have been. So. I want to thank everybody for coming for the panel and everything, and uh, I appreciate your time. Thanks for inviting. Thanks for having me. Thanks for yeah, I appreciate it. Frameline is brought to you in part by Sabo Studios, gear for the show. Tape Central, providing your media needs. Production Partners Media, affordable media solutions. And by grants from the Greater Columbus Arts Council and the Ohio Arts Council. <laughs>